we had kind of smooth sailing through the false 12 holes and then right as the difficult kind of stretch of this course, you know, 15, 16, 17, that's kind of when we got the walls of the rain. So I was thankful enough I was able to party a couple of the holes and then take the bogey on 17 with the, uh, with the OB stroke, but pretty happy to get through that stretch, mostly unscathed with the weather. I feel great, uh, great round, and I did my best and I managed to do it well. I wasn't really prepared for any rain. I had, I think, two towels that luckily lasted all day, no umbrella, and luckily I was able to get one. I guess I didn't bother to look at the forecast before, so I wasn't expecting that. Had a game plan of how to keep all my discs dry, keep my hand dry, and uh, get go as fast as I could, but still be in control. I'm going in more mentally, treating it like it's just any other tournament, because if I've found out in the past if I go into a tournament preparing, being like, this is a major, you have to do well, then I kind of psych myself out. And I'm just going to go home, get some rest, take it easy, and just try to do what I can to conserve some energy, stay restful. Hello and welcome to the 2023 European Open presented by Discmania. You are watching round two front nine coverage on Joe Mez Pro. And here in Nokia, Finland, I am joined by Jeremy Colling and Paul Ulibarri. And we have a much better weather forecast for round two. I don't think Kyle's going to have to worry about not bringing any umbrellas. I think the two towels that he has brought with him should suffice. But yeah, the beast round two winds are going to be kind of swirly here but the conditions are going to be pretty good for scoring yeah looking at kyle klein here he's doing it with some good putting good throwing of course and then we got the fins we're well, going to have a lot of new names on the leaderboards a lot of talent over here the we story? got next Tukunen. story yeah Tukunen. There's a familiar face right here, Ezra Aderhold having a very good season. He's doing it with consistent play across the board right there. Have we seen him on the lead card of the major championship yet? I don't know. But either way, he's he's relatively new to lead cards at, at this stage. But like Kyle said, as we see Oni Arminen, another new Finn here on the lead card, you just want to treat this like it's a normal tournament. If you try to go into this event thinking this is a major and I'm surrounded by one of the biggest crowds in disc golf history, it can be a little overwhelming. Tell that drink. to Paul McBeth. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Hole one, par three, 322. Down the hill, this is actually pretty cool because if you look up right, you'll, oh, one second. And we got to give a quick shout out to the fill-in hack guy who is stepping in for the traditional hack guy who's been calling the names out at this event for ever since I've been coming. Looks like a good nose up angle, good hyzer, good speed, good start. I was going to say, if you look up to the right there from the tee, you'll be able to see your shot go into the green with the big screen. I think that's a pretty cool feature. Nestor Tukkanen. We have nothing, no background stories behind this guy right here. This is going to be awesome to see these two fins out here in front of, in front of the huge Finnish crowds competing for a major title. How do they handle the nerves? Hole one is a good way to, to tell how a player feels right off the gate, and that's a good shot from Nestori. Yeah. Really committed, nice and low, sliding it up. Next on the tee, also with a score nine under par. Representing Team Distract from USA, Ezra Pedro. I think the screen here in hole one, Paul, to continue what you're saying, is one of the coolest features I've ever seen added at a tournament. I mean, I feel like we've kind of figured out what things we need, but just the, just the fact that the hole's blind just barely around the corner. Being able to see how close your disc actually is is a really neat little thing. And it's, you know, it's mostly for the two sets of bleachers right behind oh. the T-pad. But it's great for the players as well. But all those people, you know, they want to come and see the, the big show, the first okay. hole. Also with a score of nine under par, representing Team Pripastore, 
from Finland, Onni Arvinen. There's Oni's throwing here. I do have one story about Oni, and it's pretty funny. So I come back from my first round, go to the hotel, order a pizza, and I'm watching live coverage on my phone. And while I'm watching it, the guy that's serving my pizza says, hey, are you here for the tournament? I said, yeah. He said, my friend plays disc golf a lot, which isn't very uncommon for a Finn, as he puts it in bullseye. And then he says, uh, I believe my friend might be playing the tournament this weekend. His name is Oni Arminen. And I look at the scorecard and I see that he's in first place. <laughs> I told him and he freaked out. He didn't even know his buddy was playing the tournament. He just said that he plays disc golf. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's funny. And here he is in the biggest stage. And we are going to start the round off the right way on the second easiest hole of the course with a star frame. It takes guts to throw on a putt like that. <laughs> it does. I never understand the turbo putt from three feet. That was like the slap putt. I still haven't seen one miss, but I still don't understand it. A great start here for our lead group. No one's showing any signs of nerves here. Hole two, par three, 381 feet, 116 meters with OB all around it. Big forehand with the right hand or backhand roller or backhand turnover are the best plays to get to this green. You don't see too many on the backhand turnover variety, but Kyle has turned Ooh, the drive doesn't over. Like it. But why doesn't he like it? Oh, that's why. It is wide and OB and is out of bounds for a long, long way. Kyle's going to be out of bounds pretty early. This hole's kind of had a slight headwind both round one and two. It hasn't been significant, but just enough to make you think about it. That looked easy. Wow. He didn't put a whole lot of effort into that. It didn't appear. What? I am... Yeah, very smooth. There was smooth. nothing behind that. And a huge hyzer most of the way. I mean, clearly, he's got more than 400 available. Oh, my gosh, on yeah. On the forehand side. That thing wasn't flat for a second. As so we're just a bit tightened inside, but that's fine. He's inside C1, or right at the edge at least. That's usually more what you expect to see when somebody doesn't get much flatness yeah. on the shot. And that's more of the traditional shot shape. This is a little bit oh. wide and playing with the stakes and coming to rest in the one little space between the OB line and the one meter or the 10 meter circle. Well, this seems to get down. Yeah, yeah that's not the play yeah. you want for bogey. Right there. Yeah, that's pesky little yeah. twenty-two player. Ezra. One of the things that's been keeping Ezra in the mix this season, a top ten player pretty much all season, is his putting has been stellar. And Oni and Ezra off the mark just a bit. Here's that tester. Oh. Oh, yeah. That one's going to hurt. Double bogey on two. You don't see that much. The stage shouldn't be too big for Kyle. Obviously, he had a great run for the USDGC a few years back. He's been in a similar position before. But the double bogey off the start, certainly not a part of the game plan. <laughs> That reminds me, I think that's where we've seen Ezra on the, on the lead card, is the U.S. Did you see it? That, that's what I was thinking maybe yeah. at the U.S., but I wasn't quite sure what year it might have been. We got a new tournament leader stepping up. The story, 11 under. Well, at least through for this group. Is that, is that still going to be holding up for the current time? I don't. Th I mean, there's guys out ahead on the yeah, course, of course, but, but yeah. they're through nine. I mean, this guy in 
in effect, is the leader of the tournament, in my opinion. That. Pull three, par five, 863 feet, 263 meters. You got to make a decision, lay up to the short zone or attack and go all the way up here, 400 feet to clear <clears throat> into this long landing zone. And then a lot of trees to dodge here to try to get over to this elevated basket up on the ridge. Quick to get to the OB on the backside. Pretty tough get though. Eagle is possible. We have seen a couple guys get up there and make the three. This was how you would start it if you wanted to do that. This is, looks blistered. You're just getting into the safe area on the second landing zone. That's a good drive. How far is it to clear with the cider? To the, I mean, doesn't matter what you throw. But I, I was going to say, is it the same as it is to clear with the is backhand? I think it's around 400. Yeah, yeah. it's... It's a little bit longer than Ezra just threw right there. Oh, no, he just he got, got it. In. It's a different shot shape is what I'm sure, saying. Sure, sure. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's a farther sidearm than a righty backhand. Yeah. Because the righty backhand's going to be You're turning over. into it, yeah. I tried it one time in practice, one meter short. So I think it's right in that 400 neighborhood. And that, oh, no. is that just short? Yeah, because I feel like it's a similar shot shape as two. Hole two. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, and two, you're trying to get essentially a roughly, well, 380 versus 400 is a big difference there. But yeah, I guess I'm surprised with how easy the power that we just saw um, yeah. the story with yeah. that forehand that he didn't think about going forehand either, but clearly the backhand worked great. Perfect. Good start there for Kyle on hole three. This, this is shot is nervy. Great. Needs, yeah, that's got all the distance to get past the corner. Wow. wow, what a recovery. Ezra just barely inbounds. Nice and low. See how far this thing runs left. It could be OB long if it doesn't start hooking. Oh my goodness. That roll was unnecessary. The distance was pretty great. Just a couple of unfortunate meters there at the end. A little more hyzer on this. I'm less worried. Yeah. Oh, oh. wow. Yes, yes, okay. yes. He's got a decision to make whether he wants to run that or not. Absolutely. Or, yeah, what do you evil. think? 40 feet? Yeah, 45 More. feet. We'll see what he's made of. Have an opportunity to tie James Proctor's three-hole pace through round one. I vote lay it up for the young pup. Yeah, I like that play. Great save it would appear yeah after the early ob you'd like to dunk that thing next to the the bucket but that's still fine on the elevated basket here on the ridge don't want to have to make a long putt oh yeah smart play great birdie and i'm not sure Ezra has the luxury of thinking about a layup here after this OB. He could Expect even have some, for this. Could have some limbs kind of in the way as well. It's hard to tell with his ankle. He needs this to sit. Okay. Wow. That can roll back OB. You can see how close that is. I, I didn't hate the shot selection for Ezra, but just that low wide line. It just brings that right side and long both into play, especially if you have the strength of Ezra. It's the, the risk of playing for the eagle, for sure. But still able to walk away with a par with a missed putt. Yeah. So, I mean, that there's, there's advantages to that play as well, clearly. The story. Look at this start. Let's go. So cool to see.
pole for par four, 610 feet, 186 meters. One tree here in the middle that you'd like to get around. I see a lot of backhand rollers and right hand forehands here. This is the landing zone you're looking for up to the right side. Give you the choice to go either side of this big tree and try to reach this sloped green up on the right side. Classic finish technical par four. A little high, but through the gap. That, that last tree hit hardly matters. Yeah. I mean, it sure it would help him if it finishes, but that's a great shot. Yeah, beating that initial tree in the center is, is really the most important thing. Kyle threw a nice one here in round one and another nice one here in round two, but don't want to roll too far. That's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Middle. I think you kind of get the idea of how much... Oh, oh wow. The slope is, is present on, on camera here, but obviously, like always, you can't quite get a grasp of how much slope there is. If it starts rolling left, it can easily just keep going. An early tree hit is disastrous here. Oni's going to be in trouble. This hole is pretty manageable to save your par, though. Uh, there's with shots kind, like that, yeah. There's all kinds of little routes. You, if, if you hit early, it's not like a detriment. Yeah, you know? yeah. It takes birdie out. But I feel like it's pretty forgiving. Yeah. Where, where I see a lot of bogeys happen on this hole is at the green. The roll. Like the second shot skips up, hits a tree, rolls, then you're kind of scrapping around. Yes. It's going to be an anti flex here for the story and the first mistake we've seen hitting the first tree available. Choose your side. This fairway shapes well for and Annie released uh -oh, with the over stable disc. Yep, and Kyle unable to pick one. That spot is tricky because the hyzer seems to make sense, but you would think about the roll away. Yeah. And the straight shot makes sense as well for the ground play, but it's a little bit tighter gap. Let's see if this can stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sweet. Okay. But that's where the bogeys happen. Got to make those putts on that green. This is a little tougher. Got to swing this the whole way left. That and same tree wreaking havoc. Yeah, I mean, this, this, see, at the green, it's really well guarded and pushes you to those bushes. You can roll into those bushes so quick, and there's really no out from there as far as like a, a makeable lie. Perfect shot. Kyle from distance for the birdie. Low ceiling from back there. It's hard to get the height that you need. Oh, oh. Yeah, great bid. But he will drop his first stroke of the round. And good a good par save, yeah. yeah. One of the things I think when Americans come over here to Europe for the first time that they get to notice in the crowds are all the kids. There are so many kids f ranging from all ages. And we've always said, man, these are the kids that are going to be beating us down in 10 years. Or maybe even five years, six years. And uh, it's players like Nestori and Oni and all the other guys that are in the field that we've never heard of before that are out here playing tournaments, and playing with their friends, and getting better and better while we're over in the States, not just minding our own business. And it's definitely been 10 years since we said that. Yeah. So, and yeah, we've been saying that since 2011, the first time I came over here. And here we are. Yeah, there's totally. a lot of them. Hole 5, par 3, 328. 100 meters exactly, going downhill with a sloped green. You'd love to just have something get into this green slow and be able to settle the roll away kind of ever present here. Yeah, it gets on hyzer oh, this... here, and then if it hits anything, you're kind of toast. Uh, yeah, you see what I mean? <clears throat> toast. Gosh. Those are, as rollaways go, that was a friendly one. He's still going to have an mm -hmm. opportunity because there's, there's about 150 feet of roll available to head down towards the next tee pad. Kyle with the interesting follow through. 
super overstable disc. And just climbing. And this is, yeah, we're going to see it now. And there it goes. Can it curl? Yeah, again, not Ish. as bad, not nearly as bad yeah. as it could be. Just, just outside C1, I believe. Has anybody ever thrown a sidearm here and not rolled away? That's what I'm wondering. I've done it. I threw it in the basket one time. It didn't roll away. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. That one didn't roll away. Hit some trees. Edge of circle, perhaps. Oh, I like it when you play a little ante into the green. And they're all putting right about the same spot. About yeah. 35, 45 feet. Oh. Yeah, this is this is in the fifty five variety. Yeah, it got a little farther away than I thought. See Definitely. how aggressive he wants to get. Yeah, exactly. This is the going, hitting, going and hit. Let's go, the story. Wow. What? I was not expecting that. Great height. Just to ensure that if it misses, it's not going too far and just lands that. Oh, one if that misses, perfectly. it's going far. You think that's rolling? A bit. <laughs> A yeah. bit, or sliding at least. There's no way it's inside 20. That was sick. This story is here. Yeah. Like, he's, he's ready to go today. Love it. That is awesome. It's, a, it's one mm -hmm. thing, <clears throat> as he just barely misses that, it's one thing to come out to a major and just kind of put together a great first round and look up and I'm on the lead card. Wow, Okay. let's fence. go. <clears throat> but now with the pressure of that, Knowing that he has the good start, knowing that he's likely the tournament leader, wow. And then just not laying that up. I mean, he laid it up for the eagle, and then he just bullets that one. Yeah. He's really one bad shot away from being perfect right here. Yeah. One better than perfect. And only a nice bounce back. A scary putt from up there at the top of the circle, making that one. I mean, I, I feel like in some ways, Oni's putt even though it's 20 feet closer, is just as scary, if not scarier. That's a good point. A hole six is par three, 328 dead straight. You got a couple of trees to miss right here, left and right, up here on a pedestal. Whatever your straightest shot is, you really want to play a hyzer flip from left to right, so you miss that one. Yeah. And I mean, that's still a pretty good shot. It Turns out he makes those, so. Yeah. <laughs> the story going for the the force flex play, which does, I think, decrease the size of the gap just a bit. This is what you want. You want it going on hyzer and then flipping all the way over. He doesn't get it to flip all the way over, but he's going to get away with it. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Nice shot, Oni. Kyle's done it. Yeah, there's That's nowhere just that can laced. go. Yeah. Absolutely laced. And you see Perfect. how that started off with the hyzer and then barely drifted to the right, making the fairway as big as he possibly could. I don't know how Ezra can... I feel like this is like a hard hole for Ezra because his arm speed's so fast. Uh, we you know we haven't I mean? seen too many guys of that physique be able to control. Ezra's one of the better players oh, we've yeah. seen... That has that huge arm speed to able to actually hit lines. Nice recovery. I mean, never, nobody I don't think is ever going to be able to come close to what Garrett's been able to do. Arm with, speed and with, touch combined yeah, combination. Arm speed, yeah. Touch. Yep. Said that many times before. I'll say it again. One of my favorite players to watch in the woods is Garrett Gerthy. A good what a save. save. What yeah. a save. Over the top. That's a bold play from back there. Probably didn't have anything else. And a, a solid 30 footer to save the par. Yeah, up the hill. After missing a couple putts low so far this round. There are these Finnish kids are not scared of birdies. That's how they got here. They want to stay. So does Kyle with that park job. Fighting off the early double bogey blues. Getting to one under for the round. Still a slow start for him, but plenty of birdies in front of him here to get things going. Varela laid 
laying down a hot front nine, seven down in front. We saw a couple players able to do that in the first round. He's currently the leader. Pull seven, par four, 607 feet, 185 meters. You're going uphill slightly off the tee. Predominant slope down to the lake on the right side. You really have to hit this first tunnel, try to stay flat with whatever disc choice you do. Just try to get that straight skip so you can be on that top shelf after your tee shot. That's really the only way to make birdie here. And you want this to be on hyzer the whole way. So you miss that one right yeah. there. That's I think that's the play. A lot of people try to get a lot of distance. You don't really need distance. Just hyzer it around through the gap. Yeah. You're loving life. I think you get to that gap, you've thrown it over 350. You've cut most of the hole. Like this. Yeah, that's... Nothing bad can happen right there. Pretty good. They are on the other side of that row of trees, but it should be okay. It should be pretty good. I feel like no matter where you land, once you get past these, he's got to miss that one. Oh, that's so close happens. to perfection. Yeah. That was going to get everything he wanted and then a big skip. But yeah, that's that's the problem you play with by not getting that hyzer on it, like Paul's mentioning. Oh, this has got a chance to roll a little. Friendly roll. Yep. But wherever you land past that tree that Ani hit, you're going to have a scramble shot. Wow. What a shot. I mean, that's pretty good. To yeah, the top. it is. Yeah, you can see that's one of the worst places on the course is kicking right on seven. But like this shot, this isn't like a gimme gap. He makes it look pretty gimme, though. I guess he's Let's in a spot go, where is. he might have had a straight tunnel. He was up high enough, maybe. But like this is more, a little more technical. And Kyle, perfect. I want to land where they're landing. <laughs> Needs to have a little ante. A little more would be nice. Yeah, a little more would be really nice because that can make its way way down the hill. You have to start that shot 30 feet left of the pin with Anheuser to ensure a nice soft landing. And Oni has paid the price. He's down the hill. Let's see if he's even got a look. Just kind of, oh, Ooh. wow, flashing the chains a bit. And a great par scramble there from the story. Two good scrambles thus far, and the rest is just good play. I haven't seen a real flaw in the story's game. Not yet, no. Hut looks good, backhand looks good, look, scramble looks good. Looks Decision, comfortable on the stage. Yeah, decisions make look good. Mm -hmm. Forehead is big. With Kyle Klein's birdie, he gets one stroke closer to the lead set on this card. Going back up the hill for the short pole eight. Just 236 feet, 72 meters, blind to the players at the tee. Just gotta get it up over these hay bales and take your one skip up the hill. Don't put too much or you end up rolling down the backside. Oh, just a little high, but it's still gonna putt, I think. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. That's circle's edge. Yeah. There's a little bit of a low ceiling on the short left side. Maybe a tree in the way as well. Same Ezra, spot. Yeah, same spot. Surprising trouble for these two players on this hole, which is by far and away the easiest on the course. I haven't even sniffed a birdie on this one. And there's that hillside roll that you're talking about there, Nate, but still very nice shot there from Oni. 
a little smiley face in the background. Just unzit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that face, I feel like that face is what, ooh, that's I, how the player's face looks if they're closer than that stump. Yeah. I have not seen that stump until just now. How have I missed that? But if you get farther away than that. Oh, ooh, let's go. Very nice. clean. Outside the circle, too. And there's a lot of risk on that one. On the back side, it's not going to just sit down for you. That takes some guts. Well done. And back edge, the circle, and the story. Look at that. The story's wow. the favorite to win. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be at this point. At this <laughs> let's, point. let's go. This guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. He is. Uh, he's got some composure. Yeah. There's something about the ease of this hold that make players less likely to lay up on this putt. I just think you just feel in your head, yeah. I have to get this birdie. I yeah. don't care at what cost. You're not thinking about the roll away. You're thinking, two's the number on eight. Nothing else will suffice. Yeah, I think and nice we're going to see there. four of them. I think, and yeah, all pretty good putts. I, I think there's something to be said for like the degree of frustration your drive caused you has a lot to do with how likely you are to make a little bit of a foolish decision with the putter. And on a hole this easy, anything outside the circle, frustration levels building. Sure, yeah. Or on a really hard hole, really hard par three, like, yeah, okay, whatever, you're 50 feet. Yep. Yeah, so is everybody else. You can lay that up. It's not that hard. Just the Mentally, it's a little tougher when you're like angry at yourself for missing what you feel like is an easy hole. It's example 567 of why the sport is just beautifully frustrating in the mental game. It's just for sure. all these sort of things that make no difference in the end, but in the at the time, they'd make all the difference. Yeah. Forehand hole here, 338. Kyle just getting a little piece of the tree. Kind of slows it down perfectly. Yeah, just outside did. bullseye. He's going to love that. A little bit wider here for Ezra. Does he miss all the trees? If he does, does it have the brakes? Yep. Nice I feel shot. like that's the play. If you take on the trees, get through, you're going to be parked. Yep. If you don't take on the trees and you go inside, you're going to have a circle edge putt. Or you'll hit the early side trees, which is the initial bunker. You have to make sure you get around this initial set here off to the right. Let's see if we can get an example of going in. This is not inside, inside at all. Super long. And those are the trees that you're playing with. And it's going to be a longer birdie putt. See if Nestori can finish this off and get to six under in the front. Looks solid. Yeah. A lot of width and a good straight skip, but actually not that much of a skip Probably at all. a weak skip. He cut, yeah. he cut a little branch up top. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm wondering how the thing came in so slow there at the end. That long putt was more of a layup. A super long putt for Oni. Okay, now we can really see what the nerves are like. It's yeah. probably still out, yeah. No problem. No. That putt is missed. Every tournament, every round by somebody who just got a little over, over aggressive on their first putt. I mean, we saw Calvin miss a few of them last week at the PCS, running some long ones and not being able to make the comeback. Too soon to say, Nestori better than Calvin Heimberg? No, I don't think I think you're true. perhaps a little late <laughs> <laughs> to the party. I've been on the Nestori train for 15 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously an impressive start, but the front nine, like we mentioned in round one, is the easier of the two nines. We've seen some incredibly low numbers. Um, every hole seems like it's right there for the taking. The back nine is obviously where we see a lot of hiccups, a lot of bogeys come into play quick on the back nine. So getting your numbers on the front, really good, but it just kind of pads you into the difficult back. With that being said, great start. I am impressed. I, I'm, I am impressed. This is the lead part of a major. Oh yeah, and it's good stuff. making 30 footers like this. It's popping. Maybe even a couple 50 footers. The difference between doing it 
front nine of round two is certainly different than back nine of round three and all of round four, but still, like you said, Oh, you can't feel your hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you don't know what you're doing or where you are. Still 15 players within four shots of the lead. We've got the back nine coming right up here on Joe Pro.